Hi guys, this is actually my first video about anything to do with uh, multi-rotor flying or RC gear. I'm the Ant Nest on Reddit. Uh, I'm pretty new to the hobby and I'm finding a lot of stuff out as I go. There, there's this really a pretty in-depth hobby and I think that's why I like it so much. Actually, I enjoy the, the building and stuff as much as I enjoy the flying. And I put up a picture of this... Uh, u butte whiz -bang telemetry screen that I got going on my Tyrannus and there was quite a bit of interest so I figured I'm going to make a video to just show you guys step by step how to get this particular Lua script onto your Tyrannus and running because uh, yeah I won't lie it wasn't easy for me there was a lot of different information in a lot of different places and kind of every source of information seemed to leave something out and just when I thought like I'd got it going like eh, eh, there was something else so I figure yeah it'd be helpful to uh, basically just compile everything that I learned and, and put it into one video so yeah I definitely don't take credit for any of this stuff uh, it was all stuff that I learned from places like RC forums and there was some Dutch forum that I had to translate and, and work some stuff out from. And then there's the uh, Open TX University. And there's a lot of sources of information. But yeah, like I said, there wasn't really one place that had everything that you needed to do. So what kind of magic and trickery did I use to get uh, this telemetry screen on my Tyrannus Plus? Well, it was basically uh, since... Uh, OpenTX 2.0, they have implemented a feature set where you can run uh, Lua scripts. Lua is basically just a scripting language. It's supposedly a very lightweight as far as, you know, processing power and memory usage, but also very powerful. Uh, but apparently if you're a coder, it's also very simple to use. So it's really cool that... Uh, OpenTX has implemented this and in the end it's just as simple as finding a script that you like and loading it onto the Tyrannus Plus and, and executing the code. It is really simple but there's just a few steps that you need to know that are not documented everywhere that made it a headache for me. So yeah basically what we are going to do in this video is we are going to grab an existing script. I'm going to show you the way that the scripts are executed and that the way the Tyrannus deals with those scripts. Uh, we aren't going to make a script. Uh, I think that's like could be a series of videos. This video is just going to be about finding a script you like, putting it on the radio, associating it with the model and letting it rip. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be using a Tyrannus Plus, but you can use just the normal Tyrannus as well. Uh, that'll work fine. And then I'm also using the FreeSky D4R2, which I know that a lot of you guys are using. And then finally, I have the Nase32 Acro, and this will also work for the Nase32 Full. So, yeah, they're the three main components, plus a computer, obviously, and access to the internet so you can download all the right files. So, let's get started with the wiring, because that's important. If everything's not wired, it doesn't matter how you configure the software, it's not going to work. Okay, so let's start with the first thing with the Nase32. So, one of the... Uh, mistakes that I was reading that a lot of people on the forums made uh, was that they didn't realize that actually you need to have your battery plus and minus so your main power rail whether it's you know three cell or four cell doesn't matter going into these battery terminals here you'll see it's clearly marked plus and minus so you need your full battery voltage going into these terminals here in order for the NASA 32 to be able to pass the correct telemetry onto the D4R2. So that's the first thing. The second thing is these two pins here are for 
sending the telemetry via a serial bus, which is like a proprietary free sky protocol, uh, sending the information. So basically the, the signal path is your battery voltage in here and then the NASA 32 is processing that and turning that into a telemetry signal which is output on these two pins and then sent to your receiver which uh, in this case it's actually not acting as a receiver because it's actually transmitting the telemetry back to your Tyrannus. So it's really like a half duplex transceiver I guess would be more correct rather than calling the D4R2 a receiver because it actually does send information back to the Tyrannus. So yeah, just as per normal, you're going to uh, hook up via PPM. I would highly recommend that that's how you hook up. Uh, so you just need a ground, a plus five volts and a PPM wire, which is the yellow one there. And that is going to be plugged into your FreeSky receiver, let's call it. You can see here on the receiver, it's pretty clearly marked. Uh, to put the receiver into PPM mode, you must have that jumper pin on. And I've actually super glued mine on because uh, I actually had it pop off mid-flight. And uh, yeah, the result wasn't good. Basically, my quad uh, hit the ground pretty hard. And it took me uh, a couple of hours of scratching my head to work out what went wrong. And then when I found out that actually this little jumper pin had popped off, uh, yeah, then I was back in the air. So anyway, everything's pretty clearly labeled on here, but we want to use the one plus and minus. So, you know, plus and minus, it's pretty obvious. We need to hook in the plus and minus. And then uh, when we're running in PPM mode, it's the free sky receives the PPM for all the channels on channel one. So now you can see that I've got uh, ground, 5 volt, PPM, going to PPM, 5 volt, ground. It's, it's really pretty basic. And I've just uh, sold it directly on. I know a lot of the guys are putting pins and stuff on, but to me, I like to be able to just uh, keep it nice and neat and they can basically just sit under each other like that. And it's a, it's a really compact and, and tiny package. Now let's move on to what we're all here for, which is the telemetry. And you see here, we've got uh, ground, AD2, TX, and RX. Now basically, the middle two pins, we don't need. Uh, I believe they're used if you're using the FreeSky sensor hub. But I don't know, to me, like it's just a lot of added extra weight. And I don't know, maybe some guys are using it and they like it. But anyway, so we're just using RX and ground and actually you don't even really need the ground because there's already a ground here so really you just need uh in my case the green wire i wouldn't just say the green wire because who knows there might be different batches with different wire colors and whatever so you need the rx pin connecting to you can see here it's marked telemetry and now i've actually just soldered on the underside because i think it's a bit neater a pin header receiver so you actually just want the green wire of your telemetry going to this pin here so in my case it's going to be uh here on the uh jumper pin header so as far as the connections between the nase 32 and the free sky receiver all we have is four wires the telemetry wire going from the RX pin to the TX pin on the NASA 32. And then our 5 volt rail, minus and plus, and then our PPM. So it's really quite simple. I'm not going to run you through powering the NASA board with BEX and things like that, because I assume if you're watching this video, you already know all that stuff. But I just did want to go through the wiring to get the telemetry working um, just because I did read in the forums um, that a lot of people were fiddling around with software and you know chasing their tail 
and in the end they actually didn't have the wiring done properly so you know if this saves one person an hour of headaches then uh, yeah it was worth putting it in the video